And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Departure Lounge podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel, Visions International, and of course, Visions Aviation uh, live on Facebook. Good evening, everybody. Hope you are all well. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Rizzle, and joining me this evening is not Steve Waldridge as the co-host, but temporarily stepping in uh, this evening is, of course, Ian Hartley. Ian, uh, welcome to the show, um, and welcome to being co-host for the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I've got a big pair of boots to fill tonight, I think, Tom, but I think I'll manage all right. Uh, I know Steve's not, not so good at the moment, so and you'll have to forgive me as well. I'm full of a, a snotty cold as well. I'm just getting shut off, so there might be an occasion where I have a coughing fit or whatever, so <laughs> forgive me for that. I'm sure we can uh, I'm sure we can let that go. <laughs> Cheers. So, how, so apart from that, how are you? How's your yep. week been? All good. Uh, what we on Wednesday, so... Yeah, it's not been up to much, really. Done a bit of fishing again earlier this week. Got a few bits and pieces out. And as you know, Tom, did a couple of flights with you as well today. We did, yes. Yeah. We uh, we spent a good, what, five hours, five, five hours. six hours mm. potting ring around uh, flight sim today, which was good fun. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah that, was, that was really good fun. Won't, won't obviously happen all the time. But yeah, it's nice to, uh, nice to do that, actually. Yeah, not done it for a while, have we? No, definitely not. But no, yeah, it's nice definitely, um, yeah, definitely enjoyable <clears throat> on that occasion. Um, <clears throat> wonderful. So, uh, let's get into the housekeeping uh, before we run through some hellos and then get into tonight's topic of conversation. So, uh, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, we are on social medias. I know we say this every week, but we go through them anyway. Uh, we are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. Uh, if you wish to follow us on there to keep up to date with everything to do with the channel. Um, also, if you want to see us do a little bit of gaming, you can find us on Twitch as well uh, on there. Uh, we'll give a quick shout out to Visions Aviation. If you're not subscribed or liking the page already, do so. Um, it's yeah, wonderful to um, sort of be part of a, a wonderful community. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if that's your kind of thing, get involved. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah, wonderful. And again, thank you to, to, to Ken and Sarah for you know, the opportunity to stream here um also we have a shop uh which you can buy the content uh, content you can buy the um uh, merchandise there we go uh if you so wish you can find that in the description below if it doesn't work let me know and i'll fix that as soon as i can um yeah so if you wish to support the channel uh you can buy the merch there and lastly if you wish to be a guest on the show um all you've got to do is contact us on the social medias uh, in the description below and we'll get you on the show as soon as possible one last thing uh do stick with us until the end of the show because we've got a very very uh special guest coming next week mm. um which i'm looking forward to um and i know you are looking forward to ian as well because absolutely you, tom yeah yeah, yeah definitely part of the mm. show when this was happening so um mm. yeah do do stick around for that we've got a very big guest next week so uh, without further ado, let's go and say hello to some wonderful people that are in the chat. So, uh, Ian, if you'd like to do the honours. I will um, start going through these. We've got Thomas Job. Um, he's saying hola. I didn't know it was hola. Uh, hola. Is that um, <laughs> hola? hola. Yeah. Spanish. Hola. <laughs> uh, Phil Tobey there. Hi, Hope. Everyone is fine today. From Warwick in Warwickshire. So, I, hi to you, Phil. Uh, let's have a quick look here. Hi, guys, from Leslie White. Um, oh, good evening, everyone. Hope you all enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, and share. Cheers. And that's from Visions International. So, yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got quite a few. We've got Transatlantic Allison saying hi, guys. Hope you're all well. So, hello to you, uh, Allison. Um, 
Let's have a look. We've got Steve Plains watching. I don't know who he is. I'm watching him for presenting tips. Sorry, I couldn't. Yeah, watch carefully, Steve. You'll learn a tip, a tip or two here. Yeah, I don't know uh, who this guy is. He must be a first time watcher. Must be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, good evening to you, Steve. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> we've got uh, Martin. So I, I think they must be sharing the same laptop or something because they, they seem to be um, commenting together. So he's saying, "Get well soon, Steve." So happy days. Um, T and Hartley there, Gutten Tag Yall. So, <laughs> Jeff Hughes, evening guys. We've got loads of people in here saying hi to everybody. Sarah Pass saying hi to Tom in here. So, if you've missed anybody out, so, uh, Web as well to you and good evening to you. Yeah. And Leslie White, Phil Tov, there's loads of names in there. Isn't there? So there's quite, yeah, there's quite a few in there. So, yeah, yeah quite a few. Jeff Hughes as well there. Good evening to you. So, of course, I'm wondering Jim Gemmel is in there. In the oh, of course, well. yeah, Jim as well. Yeah, yeah. Can't forget Jim. But, um, but yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us this evening. So uh, what we want from you before we get off and underway, um, as you know, our topic of this evening is to do with the return of Flyby. Uh, so what we want from you guys in the comments is uh, to tell us all about your memories, your uh, favorite flights, or um, anything that sort of sticks with you uh, with Flyby, whether it's old mm. or new, um, and we'll get them sort of read out. I, I think uh, any nugget, any nugget about any flyby, nugget really, of info, absolutely. you know, impress mm. us, you know, go ahead and impress us. With yeah, yeah, we can include it in what we're, we're about to say, can't we? So, yeah, absolutely. that'd be fantastic. Yeah, what I do be. want to ask as well, because I know this was pointed out last week, is I want to know if Alison's actually watching from Bridgetown. Yeah, that's a good shout. She said she would be. Mm. So, I want to make, make sure she's actually in Bridgetown absolutely, watching yeah. us this evening for her return flight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you are. Wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, let's crack into uh, tonight's show, which, of course, like I said, is all about Flybe. Now, of course, uh, rumours were spiralling and spiralling about the return of Flybe. And, of course, over the last couple of weeks or so, um, it's been confirmed that Flybe are indeed coming back, um, as we've seen numerous aircraft be painted over the, the last sort of couple of weeks. And, of course, they've also recently um, announced that they are launching a whole bunch of routes, which we'll go through mm. uh, to begin with. So... We are sticking with uh, a, a theme for this evening. We're going to be splitting it into three sections of, of sort of the old flyby. Then we'll have uh, sort of the rumours and how they circulated. And then at the very end, uh, towards the end, we'll get on to the main sort of bulk of it, which, of course, is the new flyby. Um, but Ian, let's kick things off with the new flyby. Just how did we get to this stage where we had to try and find a new one? Well, I mean, it's been... It's, it's, sorry about that. It's been a long and... <laughs> checkered history for them and all that and um i don't know i mean it, 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 there was a lot of rumors floating around I mean, I could, we, we could go into when when they finally died i suppose you want to call it that before they sort of resurrected themselves but um there, there were a lot of money i think swapping hands and a lot of this and a lot of that going on i think weren't there and and, and i think when virgin and storeboy took them over at right at the death i don't think they had its best intentions at heart to be quite honest, in my my opinion, that's what I think anyway. And sadly, uh, I mean, I, I could just quickly whip through my notes and say that when they bought it, the consortium bought it, that they bought the shares from Flyby for one penny a share. When they floated it on the stock market, they floated it for something like, I think it was 295 pence per share. So they, had, mm -hmm. so they built the business up and it was doing quite well. And then obviously things happened, COVID and all the rest of it, and the government stopped bailing them out and, Logan -er were sort of growing as well, I suppose, if you want. And and he just sort of, I don't know, I just don't think Storbart and Virgie wanted to pump any more money into it and keep it going. I just think it were, um, I don't know, I think it was just a, a, a dying dog, I suppose, weren't it? I think it was just on its way out and they just let it fizzle out, didn't they? So, yeah. Yeah, but it's nice to see them coming back again. That's the main thing. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. I think the main thing that a lot of people associate <clears throat> uh, the old Flyby with, including sort of, um, people where I live down in the southwest of England, um, and sort of the more mm. uh, remote areas, I know, like the realm like north of Scotland, um, as well, uh, was that it provided a connection for like people, you know, people like me that live in the southwest of England. Mm. You are probably two hours away from an airport or by train if you want to go to London, you're looking at at least like three and a half, four hours on a train. Flyby gave you the option to fly from a place like Newquay, uh, you know, to like half hour, 45 minutes, mm. and then it 
to Gatwick or to Heathrow like they did before, yeah. you were getting that option of a connection to then maybe go on to, I don't know, say like a New York or a European destination, okay, yeah. rather than having to spend all day traveling, Flybe gave you that option. Um, and of course, once that was taken away from everybody, it's kind of left a massive gap, but not just the people of the Southwest, airports like Exeter, um, which was sort of the, the old base for the old Flybe, were heavily reliant, heavily reliant. Like if you go to Exeter now, you'll hardly see anything, like anything. Um, maybe the odd Ryanair mm. or, you know, um, the odd sort of you know private jet and things like that. But yeah, right now you will not see a lot of things there. So, so Exeter yeah. was a massive connection point as well because, yeah, you know that that's kind of what they were there for was mainly to be a connecting airline onto, you know, like you know bigger airports and things like that. Of course, they don't have that now, and of course now that they're coming back, fingers crossed that they can associate places like. Exeter and Newquay again and I think actually you know we can get a little bit of service there from from, from Birmingham I know Birmingham yeah. was a, a route from Newquay I think um and of course Manchester was one yeah um so if it can, can prov if, if it can provide that connection again then you know you'll quickly sort of forget about the old um sort of uh the old flyby and then the new flyby will probably give you a bit more of a um a bit more of a sort of comfortable sort of feeling about actually going on to the the, the second sort of you know, reincarnation of them mm. i mean you'd like to think so and like you say um i, I think we are, i mean it's a, it's, it's a fledgling business again now it's been, it's been started up from scratch isn't it it's not it's not being taken over by anybody it's, it's actually starting again from scratch and, and i think i mean there's there's people tom down there are cleverer than us who are thinking about all these kinds of things what you're saying now and I'm, I'm sure that they'll realise that, like you say, it's not just it's not just the uh, southwest of England, for instance. It's it's the I don't know northeast of England, far northwest of England, for instance. Even like in, in your border countries, uh, you know, your borders and, and the top to Scotland and, and and places like that. There's a lot of these places which all have these regional airports. I know. I mean, we didn't ever get fly being to Blackpool Airport, but we've got a cracking little regional airport at Blackpool there and mm. nobody, nobody uses it but it, it, it's it's one of these kinds of destinations really or one of these kind of places what what could do with something like that and and I think I think they'll they'll obviously start with the the busiest and the most profitable routes and I will probably say the southwest has to be one of them hasn't it um and then take it from there really and, and hopefully build themselves up into a you know in, into a good challenging company what what some of these so they can challenge some of these other regional uh, uh yeah um you know uh, uh, carriers that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> like your um easy jets and your logan are doing these kind of flights now so yeah um, so it's hopefully. it's 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 strange because you say sort of building from the ground up but it's it's almost like um you know assets were bought mm. um, and then it was literally like you say just then built from the ground up you know and absolutely what, what, what did we say before and it was like four aircraft they had now, like uh, four, I think it's moment. four aircraft, and I think they've got 16 routes planned, haven't they? Yeah, the routes will um, get onto a little bit later, but mm. yeah, so there's a huge, there's a bit of an expansion going on there. And you know, having looked at the routes and stuff, there are some interesting routes there as well. But there's a particular question from first time watcher, um, Steve Plains, yep, uh, who says, Does it surprise slash disappoint Tom in particular that they've chosen Birmingham and not Exeter for the new base? I think it does in a way because I think a lot of people, again, it's to do with like you know regional you know sections. I think down here, I think it was a massive shame that they chose Birmingham. Personally, mm -hmm. I mean, unless someone wants to, to 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 tell me in the comments or anything like that, I don't personally know why they've all of a sudden gone. We're not going to choose Exeter as our base. We'll use Birmingham. Is it the fact that Birmingham's busier and you know landing fees are, you know not not so expensive because i'm sure it's probably the same at um exeter but it's just it's a strange one why they've not chosen to go back to exeter knowing that it's quite a reliable um place for them and gone off to birmingham for it uh, maybe it'll change over time once they sort of think well maybe we can go elsewhere and start having little bases elsewhere like ryanair mm -hmm. but in, it's, it's interesting to you know it did disappoint me in particular because i you know to me i kind of wanted that flyby to be like right this is how I remember Flybe. This is what they should be. 
but to move yeah. them up to Birmingham, I think, is a bit yeah, it's a bit strange to me. I mean, Birmingham Central, isn't it? For a start, and and and, and I think we um, a lot of I know the business I work for. It's a centrally based business, and it branches out all over the country. So you, you think Birmingham's quite a natural hub for anything, to be quite honest, being central. Mm. Um, so I, I would imagine something, you know, the logistics behind moving to Birmingham probably was a lot better than actually moving to Exeter, just even with, um, yeah. There you go. Hingle so puts it up, yeah. It's, it's a better Hingle says it. More central. I mean, even getting stuff into Birmingham, I mean, it, it, you've got the rail network there, you've got the road network there. You, you, you've got it in Exeter, but on a smaller scale, haven't you? So, and, and I don't think, I mean, how, how busy is Birmingham Airport? It, it's sort of um, a regional airport. What's forgot about, isn't it, to be fair? Regional, but quite busy. Yeah. So maybe the passenger numbers were quite exciting. They could never base it from Heathrow or or, oh, or oh. Gatwick or anything like no. that. But maybe Birmingham was sort of the next best thing, you know, like, mm -hmm. like Hinkle said and like you said. Um, it is pretty much the centre of the country. And then, then maybe that's yeah. just what they thought was, well, base it in the centre and then just expand out. Yeah from their sort of thing so you might have got a good deal with with building prices and and, and and you know they had the hangar network there and things like that and landing fees and things like that birmingham might give them an offer they couldn't refuse to be quite honest yeah so, it's, it's it's strange because you yeah. for, like for me as a as like a football fan as well you associate fly me with the likes of exeter city mm -hmm. um and you know like exeter city i know southampton were sponsored by them as well um for a while so you, you sort of you do associate flyby with sort of the south of england so to them yeah. to be sort of now based in the midlands almost feels a bit odd yeah. but you know if it works for them and it's you new know, center you know center and then just spread out mm. over time then good luck to That's them it. i mean there's there's nothing stopping them is they like creating these uh smaller regional hubs like exeter uh, like blackpool for instance or even like somewhere like i don't know darlington or something like that you mm. know the disease other little places where they could branch out to eventually given um you know given time and, and see what the success rate is yeah so i, I, yeah. I think it's going to be an instant hit to be quite honest just because of um it, it, it's particularly with aviation enthusiasts and i suppose people who commuted a lot it's still quite fresh isn't it it's it's, it's one of the uh it, it's quite a fresh wound isn't it if you want and um to see him be resurrected again so quickly it's quite a successful um story and it's quite a nice story for a change isn't it to see somebody like that come back yeah so, mm. yeah i mean we'll have to yeah we'll just have to wait and see sort of what happens and you know fingers crossed mm. that you know this this will work for them i think that's kind of what we're hoping for here is because i think like i said they were especially with sort of how cheap some of the flights were so for example i flew on them um nuki to london gatwick mm. and <clears throat> that was like a three four night stay and for a return it was like 70 quid yeah it's for so Nolt, isn't it it's pretty much for Nolt, you know, like you say mm. so if they can keep the prices sort of at that level and yeah. and they can they can get the traffic in which no doubt they will oh yeah, um, yeah. then yeah then i think they'll, they'll be a, a, a big success i think yeah I, th I think um i think they can give logan a good run for the money as well from what i believe I think Logan Earth prices there can be quite expensive sometimes, can't they? And I think mm. I, I think Logan Earth, as as far as regional flight and you know smaller companies rather than EasyJet or someone like that, I think they dominated the market really, didn't they, for for a few years? And I think that Flybe will give them a good run for the money, won't they? I think so. And yeah, hopefully I think so. it should do something with price structures what they've got. Yeah, well, we had a chat. We had a chat in the in the group chat that we've got, and uh, I think Marco said something about the prices for for like Eastern as well, and they were sort of yeah. astronomical in terms yeah. of prices. And you think, you know, long gone are the days where you know, like like a flyby would, would would cost maybe half of what Eastern mm. were charging, sort of thing. So maybe that'd be a case of, I mean, I know obviously like fly uh, flyby or the old flyby and um, the old flyby and uh, Logan Air had like a, a partnership sort of happening. Um, whether that will continue now into the new Flyby or not, or whether Flyby will just go off as their own entity or not, mm. um, will be completely different. Um, mm. That remains yeah, to be seen, it, doesn't it? I, th I think you could call the um, the partnerships what they had because the other one would be a Connect as well, didn't they? And 
I think after mm -hmm. BA Connect and after Logan Air, I think it all started to go pear shaped for him, didn't it? Because where the yeah. Finn Air got involved at one point as well, didn't they? With Nordic, uh, Flyby Nordic, were it? Um, and then that sort of went belly up as well, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Because, like we say, there's cleverer people down there who, who know what they're doing, hopefully, and um, they'll make a success of this business, won't they? The, yeah. the, the, the network's there and the structure, the infrastructure's there for them. All mm -hmm. you have to do is provide the service now, isn't it? So, Absolutely. Going mm -hmm. back to what you said earlier, um, in regards to uh, sort of you know Virgin Connect, uh, you know, buying them out and mm. um, you know uh, funding them, uh, Transatlantic Allison says that Connect had big plans for them. But unfortunately, uh, the SLE completed uh, just uh, just as the pandemic started um, to buy them because of that funds that were there um, yeah. disappeared. Which ultimately then led to obviously the the, the demise of them yeah. over over time. Yeah. So yeah, it does yeah it does sort of it does make you think like what would have happened. You know, we've had like airlines in the past like a Monaco or Thomas Cook hit financial mm. difficulties at times and then get bailed out for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the so, government tried yeah. bailing them out, didn't they? And it's it, uh, I think the government had to stop bailing them out, didn't they? There was a lot of there was a lot of backlash, weren't there, over it? And I think when you look at uh, likes of Richard Branson, I mean, he's got he's, he's got bigger businesses than Flybe, to be fair, hasn't he? So he was more interested in saving um, Virgin Atlantic, I suppose, and his other Virgin um, parts of his empire sort of thing. So yeah. the money sort of did go elsewhere, didn't it, unfortunately? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, Julian Nolan saying that it was a great regional airline. I have to completely agree. Yeah, um, I, I know that off of my uh, two flights I've had with Flybe. Mm. Um the, the, the service is fantastic, like really, really good. Mm. Um, or the, sorry, was fantastic rather because obviously, you know, I'll, I'll, but I'm interested to try out the new Flyby when they actually do, you know, because my one of my, my goals was to actually fly the Dash 8. Yeah, same, and, same like, here. Yeah. Like new key to Heathrow, like that yeah. was on my list of things to do. And then obviously they went away and it was like, oh, maybe not then. So I think even to, to you know, if you take away Flyby, you know, there, there are no Dash 8 operators in the UK. No. Apart from Flyby. So, to, to see the, the fleet coming back is going to be pretty good for yeah. not just like flyers, but like spotters as well. Cause Absolutely, you, yeah. The, yeah. The you could never mistake a, a flyby a Q400 flying over. You could always hear him, but you need the eyes like a bloody orc to see him because yeah. they, were, they weren't that eye up, but they were only little purple dots in the sky and that were it. So yeah. they're always fantastic to um, see. You could all, like say, you could always hear them. And down at Manchester, there were, there were flocks of them, there were, they were fantastic. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. Love watching dash eights. Uh, yeah. Hydra APUs. Jack Rolls is in the house. He says the only, <laughs> the only time I managed to see Flyby is 2013 in the standard livery, but I won't forget the sound of the dash eight yeah. and have them back. Hopefully, they do pop into Bournemouth. Yeah, I think they'll probably give Bournemouth a miss. And that's yeah. I mean, I know you're probably joking there, but I, I don't see them going into Bournemouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> just on a <coughs> just, excuse just, me. Yeah, don't don't sort of. Um, don't sort of see that happening. Um, Ken Carr has joined us on Facebook as well as, of course, monitoring YouTube, um, saying hi, everyone. So hello to you joining us. Um, just going to go through some more comments here in regards to uh, what we've just been talking about. Uh, Transatlantic Allison says that Birmingham has capacity after uh, Thomas Cook failed, so deals would have been available. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that makes, makes a bit mm -hmm. more sense. Um, Will... P on YouTube yeah. says, uh, "I hope Flyby come back to Liverpool Airport." Yeah. A lot of people I think hoping that's, for this. Yeah, that's going to be one of the um, yeah hopping into Liverpool. Um, yeah. I think that'll be one of the target destinations. It has to be, hasn't it? Liverpool, certainly Manchester, but uh, yeah, Liverpool will be nice too. Yeah, mm. uh, Transatlantic like Allison. Blackpool. Yeah, Transatlantic mm. Allison believes that the Leeds to Heathrow route will sell quite well. Mm. Normally, does quite well, I think. I think because I think I'm trying to think if uh, who flies it at the moment, if there is a flight at the moment. I can't think off the top of my head, but I'm sure someone will tell me. Um, uh, Julian Nolan on Facebook saying she flew with Flyby from Amsterdam to Manchester and they had a great route to Hanover because mm. they didn't spread out too far in the European market either. Mm. Um, you know, you had uh, the likes of Han, I think Hanover was one. I'm trying to sort of think how far they went really, but yeah, I know Hanover was probably. Yeah, well, I think we've touched on European markets before, and um, it's pretty much a saturated market, isn't it? With your 
your KLM City offers, your Lufthansa's and even EasyJets and Ryanair's. There's that many people at it, isn't there? That a little, another little, fled, well, particularly now a fledgling aircraft, uh, airline like Flybe. I don't think it's going to touch the markets just yet, is it? No, I don't think it's going to want to, is it? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Um, Visions International have they announced new routes yet? Yes, they have. We'll go over those shortly because there is a, a, a there's quite a few, um, quite a few of them. Um, and we'll tell you when they're coming into play as well. So we've got the full list of what they plan on doing, mm -hmm. uh, the dates, and how many times a week. And we'll go through that towards the end of the show. Uh, Jack Rolls again says one of my favorite aircraft. What Flybe used was the da De Havilland Dash Eight. The power for a medium-sized aircraft is incredible. I'd go for probably a small size plane, personally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, once again, Steve Plains, he's popping in quite a few times this evening. Must be, you know, if you ain't subscribed already, Steve Plains, do do consider. Um, he says, you say that I've done some research. October 4th to the 7th, Heathrow to Amsterdam, Flyby, £120, BA, £82. Have I read that correctly? Flyby, £182. Oh, right, yeah, uh, 82 Gatwick uh, to Amsterdam. Gatwick. EasyJet, £57 all returns. See, so even then, do you know what I mean? That's not that bad. No. Well, I mean, you look at, I mean, it's obviously a massive um, difference there in price, isn't there? But like Heathrow or Gatwick, you're paying, aren't you? You're paying that little bit extra that premium, aren't you, to fly out of Heathrow, I would imagine. So that's probably mm. why it is the price it is. And, yeah. um, and, and even... Such a small carrier aren't going to get the fuel deals what an established carrier like EasyJet or Ryanair has got because they, they buy their fuel. I mean, I think Ryanair, I read that they buy their fuel three years before they actually use it. Mm. So that's that's how far in front they are, actually are, Ryanair. And Flyby just haven't got that capability at the moment, have they, to be fair? So I imagine the credit score is quite low as well at the moment compared to Ryanair and EasyJet, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, people are going to be a bit more wary of them, aren't they, creditors and people like that? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know. Very true. Uh, Transatlantic, Alison, hoping, like, for the uh, prices to drop. I'm sure they will I think that's do, in reference they? to, to yeah. Steve's um, comment there about the £120. I'm sure they will. But I'm sure they will. It's do, the same yeah. with a lot of things, isn't it? It's, you have to start relatively higher mm -hmm. in order to then drum up you know it, it's all about trying to build business and things like that isn't it and then yeah. once once you know you're getting the business then you'll start to bring it back down again so yeah yeah fingers crossed uh phil tovey on uh facebook says i remember the last fly be starting up from the main airport and going over to the cargo area to be repainted the last plane sat down the main airport. so that must be the the last sort of the last plane in the colors maybe possibly um, mm. thank you for thank you for sharing that julian nolan says that the dash 8 is great to fly on you guys are making me jealous because i really want to go on one <laughs> yeah i want to go on one as well the dash 8. i think everyone, it's on everyone's bucket list isn't it to fly on oh, a dash 8 mm. yeah i'd love to go on one. Oh, yeah. yeah um ken carr says i will be dashing for the dash 8s i'll get my coat <laughs> one thing for that nice there we go <laughs> First time this evening we've used hey. <laughs> uh, Transatlantic Allison answering my question about uh, who did uh, leads to Heathrow BA used to do it and then pulled it during yeah. the pandemic. Mm. One thing that we love to do uh, is, of course, rate liveries. As we know, we've been doing retro liveries. We may even go to standard liveries. I think there's an option there. Um, or maybe even concepts as well. I think concepts would be a good one. See what people kind of have drummed up and that. But Jack Rolls says, if you guys had to rate the new purple livery, uh, what would you say out of 10? I'll let you go first. <coughs> well, I was always a massive fan of the old livery, the, the, the purple livery with the colours on it and what have you. They were, they were all fantastic. Um, I particularly like the, uh, was it the Welcome to Yorkshire? Um, livery with the little bicycles on it. I thought that were a nice uh, livery. But, we saw that, didn't we? We did see it at Manchester, yeah. Um, but the white one now, I, I wouldn't say the white one with the purple is as nice, but I like the fact that it's got the purple in it as a nod to the old fly bee and what have you. Uh, but it, again, they've just gone down those cleaner lines, what the rest of the aircraft companies have done, really, haven't they? They've just gone for the simple Euro white airplane with the um, splash of colour on it really just to say who they are and 
give it some bit of individual individuality. I would probably give it. Um, I mean, I would give the other one a nine out of ten, but I would give, probably give this one probably nothing more than a five and a half to six. I would say five and a half to six. I would say so. It's nowhere <laughs> near as good. Wow. Yeah, I, well, I like it. Don't I, get me wrong. Yeah, so five, five and a half out of six. I think that's quite harsh. I mean, the thing is, you you look at like we did with some of the retro liveries, and you have a look at some of the liveries that are out there now. There are some terrible liveries. Like oh god, terrible ones. Just, yeah. And considering how a lot of airlines have gone, like say for example, an Iceland there, just a splash of colour down the tail, massive titles that just don't make sense at all, um, and things like that. They could have done that, but what they've done is they've kept sort of the the flyby identity by putting flyby on the tail, flyby at the front where it was before, but that purple yeah. as well, but going with a more sort of cleaner version. Of course, don't forget before they they went, they had that one dash eight that was painted in that sort of. Yeah. New livery at the time, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's um, yeah. It, I quite like it. If I'm honest, they could have done a lot worse with it, but I quite like it. So I'd probably give it about seven. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably no up for a seven. Well, one thing that does worry me about it being a low cost carrier as well, and being Ryan, uh, Ryan, uh, being flyby, I don't think it'll get washed. So I think within like six months you're going to see these these nice looking white planes, and I think they're going to be absolutely filthy. That's what I worry about, particularly around engines and what have you. Yeah, I just don't think they're going to clean them. I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, da dash is it the dash eights that are quite prone to becoming dirty? Yeah, well they are, aren't they? Yeah, I just... think I think they're quite prone because of the, uh, the the jet wash coming out of the back of the engines. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I might I be imagine wrong. They will be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you see some of them now, and if you Google it, I'm sure you can find a dirty, a dirty. I can't even get my words out. A Go dirty, on, man. Da, dirty dash eight somewhere, can't you? So yeah, I just think they're going to um, look a bit tired before the time. Let's say. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Just uh, before we jump on, um, I've just been sent this uh, by uh, Ken himself. Uh, this was a old uh, old school Flyby Dash Eight at Stansted that he took. You just sent me that, so I figured I'd shout that out and uh, mm -hmm. show it on the screen there for uh, for all to see. So that's a really yeah. good shot, that Ken. It is a really <laughs> good shot, and I take back what I say about it looking old before its time as well. With the dirt, <laughs> I mean that looks absolutely fine, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Mm. Yeah. It certainly does. If anybody has any uh, photos or videos, um, we'll go with photos, actually. If anyone's got any photos of any Flyby aircraft they want shared uh, on tonight's stream, then send it to us on Facebook um, or Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, you can DM us on Twitter, which I'll bring up on the screen now. Um, get it onto that Twitter account, and then we'll get it onto the show um, throughout the evening. Yeah. But yeah, really nice shot that, Ken. Really nice indeed. Excellent. That's it. Just squeezing the last bit of juice out of my tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's crack on. Um, yeah. It, let's go with rumors and things like that. So, what was your sort of first thought? That first, even I can't speak now. First thought um, in regards to sort of hearing that Flyby were potentially on their way back. Well, you, you sort of greet it with scepticism, don't you? Especially during the times, what we were in at the time. Um, I mean, they all start off as rumours, don't they? But once you start seeing um, sort of credited things, and, and there's a lot of knowledgeable people in this industry, and particularly in, in, in the groups and what have you, who get to know a lot of this inside knowledge, don't they, first? So a lot of it was quite credible. Um, it, it's exciting, isn't it? You know, it, it was fantastic, weren't it, to see it, to see it go under. But then to see him actually save the name and, and the name not to disappear and things like that, because a lot of the time with these kinds of businesses, what go bust, you have to make alterations to names and things like that. But everything's just been kept the same, hasn't it? So uh, yeah, I think um, it, it, I think it was always quite a credible rumor because I think even when they went bust, I think. The rumours pretty much started circling straight away, didn't they? That, that they've come back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Were well, you sort of one that thought, you know, oh, it won't happen? It's one of those rumour mill type things, or did you think 
yeah, it'd be quite nice if they did actually. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I, nobody wants to see anybody go bust like that. But uh, to see it, to, to see an airline, which is, I think it's dear to a lot of people's hearts, particularly when you're living in an area like yourself uh, who use it for commuting and things like that, but also use it, you know, as a, as a spotter as well to, to see a lot of these you know, Q400s and, and other planes and what, what, what they had and the different types of liveries and things like that. They were always nice, excuse me, nice to see. They always sounded great. So to hear that they were coming back and particularly that they were only the, the only airline to use the um, Dash 8, it was um, fantastic because you know mm. that the planes are going to come back again then. So, yeah, yeah. it's always good to see. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I was kind of like a lot of people, like especially like uh, Jim Gemmell there saying, um, was a case of believe it when I see it. Yeah. Because um, sort of we've we've seen, you know, we've seen rumours of um, airlines uh, sort of, you know, uh, coming back. Like I know there was there was talk before about Thomas Cook uh, coming back, and you know, so I think a lot of the time you do see it with you know you do take it with a pinch of salt, like you say, and absolutely, yeah. You, know, you yeah. sort of wait to believe it when you see it, sort of thing. You know, mm. it's like now, you know. Um, with with ITA doing uh, as well as they're doing at the moment, you know, then there's talk of bringing back the Iberia branding. Uh, Iberia, what am I on about? Alitalia. Um, don't know where I got Iberia from. No. Um, Alitalia branding. Um, you know, it's 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 one of those sort of things where it's like, yeah, believe it, believe it when you see it. Yeah. Sort of thing. Just while we do carry on, I'm going to just play this video that Rob Brown has so wonderfully sent oh, me. Fantastic, yeah. Um, of some aircraft coming into Presswick. Uh, I believe these were diversions, judging by the, uh, yeah, diverting, yeah. So these yeah. were all supposed to be going to Glasgow, but they've all diverted into Presswick. Yeah. I mean, what a cracking sight that is. They're so quirky looking, aren't they, with the um, nose wheel where it is, and there's absolutely nothing under the fuselage. I think they just look fantastic when they're coming in to land. They don't look like they're going to land, do they? Mm. But, you know, they're... The, the, quite an unusual design i suppose but very sturdy I think. yeah they are very sturdy aren't they yeah yeah um will p says i did slash do prefer the old purple colors so this one here on screen yeah that's the one with the little thistle on the front isn't it? i've got a few pictures of that one to be honest mm. yeah uh phil toby says uh, fly be start flying from the 13th of april from birmingham to aberdeen that is the inaugural flight right. uh, which has been confirmed so april 13th mm -hmm. so what two it's about two weeks away i think yeah it's only a couple of weeks off now that yeah so that's fantastic yeah, two isn't weeks it? or so yeah mm -hmm. i'd love to get up there for it but i know i'm not going to be able to mm -hmm. um jack rolls loves his apus uh, they may be an older airline but they got character they certainly well, do. Yeah, the old, yeah, you know, the old, you know, Flyby came from the old British European and uh, the European as well. So, ow, just that's don't. where the name came from, weren't it? The B at the end of Flyby were British European, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much where it came from. Was was there? So, I remember seeing the old uh, like Jersey European. Uh, uh, I think it's the BAE one four sixes. I think or was it the Avros they had? Yeah, they had the BAE one four sixes, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, very uh, very nice livery. I quite like this old blue one actually, the one that's on the screen at the moment as well. I think it's quite nice. Mm. It's got some character. Yeah, it has. Yeah, they are, they are um, nice livery. Yeah, really, really are. Yeah. The old one's definitely better. Uh, Russell Graham says, "Good shots from my local airport." Mm. Um, this is Rob. Yeah, Rob Brown plane spotting video on YouTube. Do give him a subscribe as well. Uh, also, he says, I flew the EasyJet service from Glasgow to Nuki last summer, uh, and it was far better experience flying that route on an A320 compared to the Dash 8. Much smoother and quicker flights. I think, I think whilst that's probably a given, yeah. you would go on the Dash 8 purely for the experience. I, I think that's what it's about, isn't it, with a Dash 8? You're not, you're not flying as high, are you, either? So you get a better view of the ground, or you get a better view of your... Uh surroundings i suppose but um i think it's just the experience on a dash eight it's, it's proper old school isn't it yeah 100 100 yeah you can just see um, stewardess coming around with a, a titan flask with a tea and cart you with really strong tea in it and uh 
one of those Biscoff biscuits where you get in a posh cafe. Yeah. Where, you know, <laughs> that's the kind of, and that's just in business class mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Let's not talk about business class, shall we? <laughs> Seems we spoke, we spoke about the uh, off air, didn't we? About them introducing business class and that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Know. 1981 <laughs> or something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, really, really cool video. This actually of, of some fly the aircraft um, and things like that. Uh, Visions International saying, "See, Ian knows his stuff." I think that's is that to do with the delivery, maybe. I've no idea. It's all, it's all there, Ken. It's all in that. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, Rob Brown plane spotting. Uh, I mean, forgive. There's a Logan airplane on the on the thing right now, but that's fine. Uh, problem with the relaunch is that they run at the risk of slipping into the same old ways as the previous incarnation. I don't Which... know. I think we've, we we talked about this. We we Air Italia, didn't we? We Air Italia when when they incarnated into ITA now, and I mean, I thought that the first mistake they made, although they look beautiful, is is painting the airplanes the way they painted them. Just because the sheer cost of having to paint them and for a business what's gone bust more times than i don't know what you, you would think that they would keep it dead simple wouldn't you but it, it seems to it seems to be working for them i'd like to think that flyby would also have a successful business i think the thing is with flyby there's still that gap in the market for them what's not been filled properly and i think they're coming back to fill that gap in and i think that's I think that's where Flyby are open to head anyway. So, mm. yeah. I think personally, I think what their problem was was they bought the the Embraers in. Yeah, uh, cause eventually they got rid of the the one nine fives because it was too much playing for them. Yeah, I think. They, they were, yeah. Was, am I right in saying that they were the launch customer for for one nine five, and they, they got twenty six, didn't they? But they couldn't they couldn't really use them. I'm sure I read somewhere, and it, that, that that had it's something. It's either one nine five or one seven. I'm yeah, no, one nine five. Yeah. yeah, they bought twenty six in two thousand and five. They were a launch customer for that particular type. Uh, yeah, but they couldn't. They, they, I don't think. I think they had them, but they had no real use for them. Yeah, so because of, of the. Um, I think it's because the short nature of the flights that they were doing. Yeah, it was yeah. it was too much plane for it, which is why Absolutely. the dash was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you went on one, didn't you? From um, when you went to Gatwick, yeah, went on a 195 and it was half full. Well, that's it. I mean, that would have been serviced quite adequately. We we had dash eight, wouldn't it? To be fair, whether it was done, yeah, so whether it was it was done because of like the day it was, or whether it was just that was the, the yield that they were coming, uh, that were going with each time, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, I know it was half full going and half full coming yeah. back. So that plane but, would have flown at a loss, I would imagine. Yeah, but I still imagine I, I still put it down as one of my favorite flights. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. put it down as one of my favorite flights because the I'll take, the Embraer 195 is fantastic. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says, it's fantastic. Yeah. Overpowered. Fantastic. I think you said they were quite overpowered on it when they were taking off. You like a rocket on. Yeah, massively. Like it's, yeah. it's one of those rare ones where it throws you into like in your seat. If you're like yeah. sort of set forward a little bit. And all of a sudden, you know, pilot just whoop, puts the yeah. power on. Yeah, you just feel yourself just throwing yourself back, and yeah. oh yeah, just yeah. And the, the 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 you know the climb the climbing rig power as well is phenomenally good. Yeah, like so good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hands down, one of my favourite flights. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, um, Rob Brown playing spot in there. Uh, of course, thank you for the video. Uh, says assume the Jersey call sign relates to their past life as British European. Well, Jersey European. That's why yeah. they've got the cool sign of Jersey. So yeah, it's a nice little nod to their uh, mm. their sort of their past. Um, Darren Smith is my kind of dude. He says A three twenties and seven three sevens are boring. Dash eights any day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All day long. Yeah, I, um, I'd, I'd love to go on a three twenty. Like I've, I'm hoping to try and book Nuki to Heathrow uh, this summer with British Airways, and hoping it's a new. I imagine it probably would be. But yeah, I I still take a dash eight any day just for the again like for the experience and that. Yeah, the, the, I mean the three twenties and the seven three sevens they're they're fantastic at what they do, aren't they? Let's let's be honest. But they're a bit, bit generic and a bit boring, aren't they? To be honest. And yeah, seven three sevens are all right. They're not too bad. I've never not never been on a three twenty. I've been on a seven three seven three hundred. Yeah, and they're really really fun to fly on. 
Um, but yeah, not on any the, the recent like you know eight hundreds and things like that. But mm. like, you'd still take a dash eight if you if you turned up to the airport and saw a dash eight was taking you somewhere, you'd be like, yes, yeah, get in there, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, Cheeky proper clinging on to your, yeah, proper clinging on to your handles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like come on then, let's let's do this. Yeah, yeah get me through security it. now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Visions International pointing out, uh, IT, as we were talking about ITA, uh, ITA will end up just the same as Alitalia, unfortunately. Mm. Hopefully not, because yeah, their um, their stunning A three fifty, which came out the painting, uh, painting, paintwork, paintwork, paint, paint shed. facility shed. We'll call it a shed. Yeah, came out the shed in Toulouse uh, during the week, mm. and my God, is it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. proper stunners, aren't they? They really, should, really are. Yeah, that should yeah. really have uh, a yeah. rating of like 18 plus. <laughs> I mean, I do tend to agree with Ken in a lot of ways, though. We, we, with ITA and not like Ali Sal, you, you, it's sort of it's sort of written in the stars, isn't it? But you'd like to think that um, they might turn it around this time. But when Hopefully. you've got people like Ryanair of a base, don't they, in Italy and things like that, the, the competition's there, isn't it? And yeah. It's going to be a struggle for anyone competing with people like Ryanair and EasyJet. Well, let's hope not. Anyway, let's hope let's that they. Not. Yeah, let's hope that they. Yeah, sort I, of I hope they. Yeah, I hope they do as well. Especially because yeah, like I'm still to yet to grab a, a video, you know, bit of video of them. So, yeah, yeah don't want to flounder just yet, but not yeah. at all. But yeah, I'd like to see them up here. It'd be nice. I'm, I'm sure they mm. will. They'll, they'll expand and do do things. Uh, Jack Rolls uh, going. Tom and Ian, big shout out to you guys. Your true mates and top blokes. Oh, Cheers, top Jack. Yeah. Thank you very. <laughs> Very much. Uh, I'm just literally going through comments right now, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that because we'll get on to the roots and everything all in the eight second. Rob Brown plays for and agrees with me. Says he agrees that the Embraer was the problem. Expensive to operate. Logan Air had a similar issue. Flew the 175 from Birmingham to Glasgow almost empty. Mm. And of course, we saw them at Manchester quite a bit when you and I went yeah. um, nearly four years ago now. Can't believe how quickly that's gone. Oh, that's <coughs> by Annie. Uh, that's, yeah, frightening. Yeah. I'm still um, milking them pictures now on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got um, scars on my legs from sunburn. <laughs> um, we yeah, we we saw quite a few of them. Um, you know, they, they were lifting off quite quickly, weren't they? As well, and you'd think, oh, you know, powerful, but maybe that was the the case of just not having enough passengers on. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, just going to bring another image that uh, Ken has wonderfully sent me onto the screen. I know he put it into the chat earlier that he was looking for it. He did find it, and he has sent it to me. It is the uh, Dash 8 with a dragonfly. Oh, fantastic. So pretty nice, that. Yeah. A decent shot. One of those I mean, ones where uh, frame it, I think. It's yeah, a really they, good shot, that. The, the profiles are fantastic, aren't they? Just looking at them, they're, they're brilliant. Yeah, it's a nice, mm -hmm. uh, nice little plane. Although I did see um, Transatlantic Allison um, showing a lot of love for the Dash Seven, because uh, obviously I, I believe she, I can't remember if she said she flew them or not. Um, but yeah, Dash Eight is nice, mm -hmm. but not as sexy as the Dash Seven. Dash Seven is really nice. I won't lie. That's you. You know what the Dash Seven is, right? Yeah, it's just a smaller version, isn't it? Smaller version of yeah. four props. Yeah. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah, what the word for prop bit to be quite honest with you there, but uh, yeah, sure well, we, we, I, think we discussed it. I think we discussed it at the time. I think it, it was the only, um, it's like the only airliner, I think, to go into Cushavel on a regular service, I think, right. because uh, it had I, enough I power behind it. Be right. Yeah, it, it's the only airliner that's actually there's actually video footage of it, uh, which I won't bring up. No, um, but um, yeah, you can go find that on YouTube yourselves. Um, but yeah, the the Dash Seven is the only airliner. I think I think it's regular service uh, into Kushavel because it's the only aircraft that could power you know, could um, uh, could sort of manage it. I'll, yeah, I'll, I will bring a picture up because mm. uh, Alison has sent me one. Fantastic. Um, really? Imagine oh that yeah, that that's yeah. Rob Brown's just saying that. Did Alison not fly the Dash Seven with Antarctic Survey? Yeah, she has sent me yeah. a picture, so I'm just going to get that onto the screen now. Um, or try to. I've just clicked a button that's decided to nuts things up a little bit. 
Um, oh, have I done with it? There we go. Got it. So for anyone not knowing what a Dash 7 is, it's coming onto the screen. Great picture, Ken. Um, I will say that. Here we go. There you go. That is the Dash 7 for anyone wondering. Yeah. Lovely plane. Really, really nice. Oh, Twin Otter. There you go. It was a twin altar, that's why I got confused. Oh, yeah, of course, it was a twin, twin altar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a dash, yeah, dash seven. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? So, yeah, really, really nice. Really, really nice. So, thank you for that picture, Alison. Mm. Excellent. So, um, let's move on to sort of the final sort of thing, which we'll spend a bit of time talking about. and. Uh, uh, wonder why sort of they've they've chosen these sort of um, these sort of things. Uh, so, uh, oh, okay. So Ken has one <laughs> delightfully sent me another picture. We'll just this is what we like. If you've got any pictures, like I said, do send them to us. Or as he said, I think he said, okay. Do you know what? I'm going to hang fire on that picture. But let's go into the roots anyway. So as uh, I think it was Phil Tovey mentioned earlier, uh, they are uh, operating on the 13th of April. Um, he said, he said, Birmingham to Aberdeen, weren't it? Yeah, actually, you know what? I think that might be wrong. So I've got Belfast to Birmingham on the 13th of April. I've really not done any research on the routes. So I I'm looking. I'm just yeah. I'm just looking at the routes here. I've got. Uh, do you know? I don't. I don't. I can't see it. And this was this was published last week. Right. Are they, are they only flying one route that particular day? So they start up with what looks like. I mean, unless I'm just going to have a look at the, the chat here, just in case. I'll show that picture in a minute. Ken's had a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a little bit of a meltdown, but I'll show that picture shortly. Um, so the new new routes I've got that are literally in order of, of the dates and that. So according to what I've got here, um, the full list of flight routes for 2022. So they are kicking off with Belfast to Birmingham, which I think is probably a return flight, uh, from April 13th up to four four times daily later in the year. The following day, they go Belfast to, uh, or am I looking at something completely different here? I'm just about to bring them up now. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me, I don't trust that one. So let me find. Yeah. In actual fact, I might be right. Flappy. I am correct. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm right. I'm good. I'm just double checking. Uh, so yeah, so Belfast to Birmingham, April 13th, four daily uh, later in the year. Belfast to Glasgow from April the 14th, so the next day, up to four times daily. Mm. Uh, then it's Amsterdam to Birmingham uh, from April 28th. So they are, they are starting with a European flight straight away, then, aren't they? Which straight surprises away. me, really. Yeah, literally a few weeks in. Yeah. Um, one daily. Uh, Amsterdam to East Midlands, which is getting served. Yeah. Uh, one daily as well from the 28th. Uh, quite yeah. a few from the 28th, actually. I was just looking. Yeah, they have uh, Amsterdam to Heathrow that day, don't they? Uh, so they've got, um, so on the 28th of April, they've got Amsterdam to Birmingham, one daily, Amsterdam to East Midlands, one daily, Belfast to Leeds, uh, up to three daily, uh, Belfast to London Heathrow, uh, up to two times a day, yeah. um, and Leeds to Heathrow, which is the one that we're going to be keeping on because we want to see sort of how well it does, which could be up to three times daily with no head to head competition. Yeah. That's the one what Alison was saying about, weren't it? Leeds, Leeds to Heathrow. Yeah, mm. um, which should be pretty, um, it, like you say, it's interesting that they've gone for the European routes quite quickly. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, looking here, they've got Birmingham to Avignon, July the 9th, Birmingham to Brest, Southampton, to, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, Toulon, Jerez. <laughs> Great that's effort. Maltese accent for some reason. Yeah, that's definitely not Maltese. We'll get that. No. 
<laughs> it's definitely uh, not bog teas. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, a full. We'll, we'll continue with the, the, the full rundown uh, of them. <clears throat> so Amsterdam to Belfast from May the twenty eighth. That's one mm-hmm. times daily. Uh, Amsterdam to Heathrow because uh, I got a couple of slots at Heathrow. Um, Amsterdam to Heathrow May the twenty ninth. That's up to two times daily. Uh, then you've got June the twenty third Belfast to Edinburgh three yeah. times daily. Uh, July the seventh sees Belfast to East Midlands up to two times daily. And then quite an interesting one is Belfast to Manchester on July the yeah. 7th, uh, which is up to four times daily. So Manchester mm-hmm. will be seeing um, yeah. the new flyby back there. Um, July the 9th, one weekly, uh, one times weekly instead of daily, uh, Birmingham to Avignon, as you just mentioned. Mm. Um, and, of course, Birmingham to Brest as well. Um, YouTube, that's not a swear word. That's a place in France. Um for monetization reasons. Uh, then 23rd of July, Southampton to Avignon, one weekly. Southampton to, as you say, Toulon Jerez, uh, to uh, one weekly. Uh, uh. Uh, then we have July 28th, uh, Belfast to Southampton, two times daily. Birmingham to Edinburgh, four daily. Um, Birmingham to Glasgow, three daily on that one. Then in yeah. August um, is where. Uh, Aberdeen to Birmingham comes in on the 18th of August, one times daily. Mm-hmm. Um, Aberdeen to Belfast on the 25th of August, uh, four four times weekly. And uh, then we have Belfast to Inverness as well on the same August 25th, four weekly. And then lastly, Belfast to Newcastle on August 25th as well, one daily flight. That's really interesting, that. I mean, <laughs> judging by those flights, though, I don't know why they didn't have their... Um... Head office in Belfast. Yeah, I know. I think I believe Belfast is supposed to be one of the the bases for them. I think that mm. and that I think they've announced recently. I'm I'm fairly certain of it, unless someone unless I've imagined it that Belfast is supposed to be a big hub for them. Right, right. As right. well as as um, it, it's looking like it. Judging off those flights, they're they're, they're um, throwing a lot of cards into the Belfast um, arena, aren't they? I suppose they're um, basing a lot of uh, flights from up there, aren't they? Looking at that. Mm. Mm. it was yeah it's um <clears throat> yeah it's it's a it's like, like you say like putting all your eggs into the belfast basket and there's some very interesting routes on there as well belfast to amsterdam is an interesting one i think uh yeah. that i saw as well it's good to see southampton get it yeah absolutely well. yeah yeah um so obviously they are looking at the south as well and i believe there is supposed to be some sort of you know later on not maybe not straight away, maybe not even this year, but then I, I, I do believe I have read somewhere that Nuki and Exeter are getting looked at. Mm. So whether they'll do both or whether they'll do one is yeah. Another, I mean, pro- probably these routes they've got on here are um, they've obviously done the research, haven't they? They found them probably be to be the most profitable routes what they could possibly do at this given moment in time. Um, like you say, I mean it's. It's a young business, isn't it? You give it a couple of years, don't you? Two to three years, and uh, hopefully you'll see it expand and move into these um, smaller places like your new keys and, and, and places like that, hopefully. Um, but I think that's a good, um, certainly a good start for them, isn't it? The, the servicing, um, maybe, I don't know what they're doing. Do you think they're going for business people flying into cities all the time? Belfast City to Manchester and um leeds Bradford to london um, amsterdam east midlands birmingham and yeah they seem to be flying from the obviously the bigger the, the bigger cities apart from heathrow the smaller airports in these bigger cities sort of thing that's what yeah. they seem to be aiming for so it's uh it, it's interesting i know um i think it was allison just now said um that um is it manchester would she say manchester to belfast i believe she said mm. Uh, there you go. Uh, Belfast to Manchester was a busy route, so that'll explain why obviously that route is, is coming back, mm. um, which again does make sense. Um, yeah. Darren Smith says that he did the Manchester to Belfast flight years ago on the BA ATP, that's going back some time. Yeah, I saw a really good picture of a BA ATP, uh, yesterday, I think it was on Twitter. That was really cool. No, it was a Twitter, no, Instagram. On the yeah. British Airways Landor page, 
if you have a look on there, there's like all it is is just land or pictures from planes that have worn it over the time. Mm. And yeah, it's like plain, you know, 18 plus plane pictures. Mm. It's lovely. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a couple of people saying hello. I know uh, I was going to say King Henry VIII then, but it's not. It's Kevin Henry VIII. <laughs> 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 saying evening all. So evening uh, to you. Uh, thank I've you. never seen them both in, in, in a room together. So no, no. Conspiracy. Mm. Yeah, um, <laughs> Will P, um, I know I, I've done this plenty of times with the caps lock, thinking you're doing it the right way, but you're not. Uh, Belfast and Birmingham are the main hubs to start with, which explains the huge amount of um, you know, Belfast flights to begin with. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, Rob though. Brown, plain spotting says a pretty packed upcoming schedule. Uh, time will tell how the load factors l uh, look going forward. Trick mm. will be to bin the unprofitable routes quickly. Yeah, definitely. Um, which will be an interesting one. Um, Visions International says good luck to them. So absolutely, yeah, 100%. Well, we are wishing them uh, the very best of luck with that. Absolutely. Um, the Transatlantic Allison says, don't think the day business traffic is the plan. Frequency is not high enough and the slots are too late for day trips. So that rules out your theory of uh, just deliver it like you know, dropping off business people and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Steve Plains still hanging around with us for a first time watcher. Uh, probably save Southampton Airport. Be interesting to see if this drives up Aer Lingus prices down with the Belfast routes they're competing with. Mm, it's an interesting one, that isn't it? Very much so. It yeah, could, be, could go either way, that couldn't it? could be yeah it, it, definitely this is what i find fascinating about this whole like relaunch of flyby is it's not a major play like it's not like your british airways or your virgins or americans or anything like that this no. is like a, a a uk regional airline and they're sort of going at it again and and, and trying to sort of provide the, the same routes as before but then also trying to do something a little bit different and you know i like the way that they're going forward but hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, this will work out for them. And, and you know, I think a lot of people are hoping that they do they do quite well uh, yeah. this time yeah. around. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me again. Um, oh, I've got that tickle in my throat at the moment. <laughs> uh, excuse you. Um, yeah. I think I'm all right. I think I'm good now. Yeah, I think um, a bit of healthy competition for Erlingers won't do them any harm at all. Will it? I don't think it'll do the prices any harm. I mean, we we want to see that business succeed and we want to see it flourish and grow and what have you. But on the other hand, we don't want to get shafted when we fly down to Southampton from Manchester, do we? Mm. So it's got there's sort of a fine balance somewhere, isn't there? And I think yeah. like um, uh, what's it we're saying? Um, oh, bloody hell, that's gone. Um, Rob Brown. Um, he was saying, Oh, no, it wasn't Rob Brown. Where it were, it was, uh, oh, no, no, it was Rob Brown saying that they have to get rid of those unprofitable routes really quickly, don't they? So, yeah, I'll, I'll get there eventually. That's why I'm only yeah. a contributor normally in a, in a commentary. <laughs> I don't usually do none of this front of house stuff, I'm usually in the background. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Come back, Steve. Come back, yeah. <laughs> Matthew Harris says, Great stream. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much, uh, for that one. I appreciate the compliment. Um, Transatlantic Allison going for air, air fungus will <laughs> will go hard with the price. He's got AI, uh, IAG behind them, and they love to squash or buy out competitors. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's a quite a worry, isn't it? Yeah, mm. especially if you got uh, IAG in the background as well. Mm. But don't you think Erlingus at the moment are sort of trying to spread the wings? Well, they're also so. obviously bringing back their old regional airline as well. So, oh, right, right. Um, you know, they've, I think they've recently started uh, mm. sort of redoing flights and stuff. I know the regional section went under and then they came back with the Emerald Air Airways, I think they're on there. Um, mm. So, be interesting to see what happens. I think there's a, there's a bit of competition going on here, regardless Definitely, of whether yeah. both sides decide they're not going to admit to it. I think there's a bit of competition going on. I there. think there will be a bit of competition, won't there? It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Hopefully, I mean, nobody's mentioned Logan Err in this little uh, love triangle yet, have they? Um, no, no they're going to be quite a major player in it as well, aren't they? Into the mm -hmm. uh, price wars and things like that. What will go on, I suppose. Um, let's just not let Flyby 
you know, they, they, I think they will make a success of it, to be quite honest. Fingers crossed. I think, I think it'll work for them, yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed, yeah. yeah. Um, comment on the night so far goes to Sam Danvers, Sam, footballing yeah. legend. Uh, hashtag don't <laughs> let Steve come back. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, uh, Steve Plains going off. Stop taking tips <laughs> <laughs> from the uh, from the new host. But uh, yeah, is there any sort of? Um, I, I mean, we could go through that, and you know, we could sort of uh, break it down a little bit. Is there any routes on that list that you think is going to be a massive hit? And do you think there's going to be a couple on there that might not work? Um, I'd be. I think I'd be concerned from a from a. A, a small business like like um, Flyby at this particular moment, with the European legs, what they what they're planning, the Avignons and the Brest and and the Toulon Jerez flights, I'd be quite. I mean, the, the clever people that may have thought this through, haven't they? So, I, I mean, I personally would have just stuck to flying regional, to be quite honest, and then maybe looked into flying European because. The European market is such a saturated marketplace, isn't there? With that many players now, that for for somebody else just to slot in, I don't know. I mean, are the prices going to be right? Are they going to fill the planes up? Would you rather fly on a if you, if you're going on holiday? Forget nostalgia and and the fact that it's on a dash eight. You've got your wife and kids with you. Are you just going to want to jump on an easy jet three twenty and get there in, in not half the time, but you know a little bit quicker and a bit more comfort? Mm. So there's there's different factors at play, isn't there, with these European flights? Yeah, I suppose. So I don't know. Um, I'm quite interested in the, the, the like the Belfast to Scotland routes they've got, the Edinburghs and Glasgow and uh, Inverness. I think it is, isn't it? So it, it's quite interesting why they've chose them routes, and I can see why they've chose them routes. But then they've just totally dismissed the southwest of England, mm. but they'll still fly out to places like Inverness. <laughs> Were I, I would say the footfall would be quite similar to what the southwest of England would provide. It's a shorter flight, I would, you know, obviously, but it's interesting why they've. Why I mean, Edinburgh and Glasgow, you can totally understand they've, they've uh, obviously gone for the bigger cities, haven't they? But um, yeah, there's a few there I'd be quite a bit dubious with. But mm. in yeah. fact, I'll tell you what. Well, as you do that, I'm going to put this out to people that are watching right now. If you could, if you were speaking to Flyby right now and you had to request one route, what would it be? And tell yeah. us why. So that's what I want to know from people that are watching. I want to know um, what route they would request from Flyby and I want to know why you would request that from them yeah. as well. Um, Matthew Harris uh, pointing out why you've mentioned Inverness is because there's oil workers in Inverness. That's a good shout. Yeah. Um, Transatlantic Allison says they need to do a Humberside to London Heathrow uh, route, and then she'll be happy. Um, Rob Brown plane spotting. I'm going up now. Uh, Glasgow slash Edinburgh to Birmingham uh, to head up uh, head to head with Squeezy Jet. Yeah, squeezy Jet. Yeah, yeah. I'm not reading that comment out. <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen it. I'm not reading it out. Uh, Ken Carr says uh, Stansted to Birmingham would be handy. I imagine that'd be quite a short flight. That actually. Um, in fact, you know what? I will read it out. Why not? Uh, Jack Rolls oh, requested. Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm reading something else. I'm reading something else. That's fine. And I was going to say, uh, Jack Rose has uh, jokingly put Bournemouth to the country of Jordan because he wants to enter that place. <laughs> we're going to leave that as it is. I think I would do if I were you, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No APUs there, apparently. No. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Steve Plain says, Nuki in particular is a UK holiday destination with people escaping the north. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's I'll very tell you what, though, Steve, I bet there's twice as many planes coming back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of northerners come down to New King. They love it yeah. down here. Yeah. Uh, Rob Brown, plane spotting. Is there any London city routes mentioned? Not at the moment, I believe. No, not at the moment. No, no. no yeah, not, not at the moment. Them, They're obviously targeting, they've got some sort of target demographic in mind, haven't they, with the routes they've chosen? 
I would imagine. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, London Heathrow, rather than London City, or even Stansted or Gatwick or whatever, the, the, the landing fees and things like that. So it's not going to be... It's not going to be a cheap flight, is it? Well, we've seen that with the prices, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Transatlantic Alison pointing out, obviously, the Humber side to Heathrow uh, flight so she can get to work without driving. Not a bad way to commute. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Darren Smith saying, great show, gents. Got to go catching 7 a.m. Oslo to Heathrow in the morning. I need to be up at 3.30 a.m. So thank you for watching. And, yeah, uh, yeah Darren, so you get your head yeah. down. Yeah, have a safe flight tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Russell Graham on YouTube pointing out most of their former routes at Nuki were taken over by other airlines, so no room for them uh, for them there now. I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, maybe some room could be made. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know quite know that. You know, I'm not fully clued in with the Nuki sort of structure, but no. um, you know, there are sort of other places down here, such as like. Here's the other thing that I'm going to mention is that the old Plymouth Airport would have been suitable for Flybe nowadays. Um, I think, anyway, I think that would be sort of suitable. Um, if not, you've got Exeter and, of course, you know, they reopen up Bristol if mm. need be. got Bournemouth or, as well, haven't you? Or, or Bournemouth, Bournemouth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got, there's plenty to go out down there, isn't there? But I was going to say, even if there's no room at Newquay, they haven't got a problem in standing on other, other people's feet, have they? With, no. the, with the with the flights what they're flying now so they're not bothered about that are they so no, i think it's just too. about i think at this moment in time it's just about making it profitable isn't it and and, and getting re-established again yeah absolutely I'm sarah pass on facebook saying stansted to bristol be a decent little run that mm. uh ken carr uh asking uh, how many people fly to nuki on holiday Probably quite, a few, of, quite a few flights throughout the day, weren't there, before? Yeah, um, I don't think anybody flies to Newquay from up here. No, nah, well... Megabus. Megabus it. Megabus, get there for a quid. Yeah. yeah that's how we If you want to get there a super slow rate, you might as well megabus it. Oh, I've only ever been on one megabus, but that's another story for another day. Yeah, yeah. we'll do it again. We'll do a bus podcast, I think. Oh, oh no, that's, that's Ken's domain, isn't it? Yeah. If you have any... <laughs> If, if oh, we're touching someone, that. Yeah, we're not going into buses. Yeah. Actually. If you ever need somebody just like Mega Bus off Ken, I'm your man. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matthew Harris, uh, Nuki is as uh, Nuki is quiet as is Southampton. Plymouth closed due to lack of operators. That that is correct. Uh, for that one, uh, Ken Carr saying actually South End Ops might be a shout. Check in to plane will be a breeze. Plus only 50 minutes on a train to London. It's not a bad little shout. It's not, not a bad little shout, that. Mm. And <laughs> Ken saying, don't do a bus, po <laughs> a bus podcast. Don't to. worry, we're not going to. We're not going to touch it. Uh -huh. that's, all, that's all for you. Mm. Um, Rob Brown plane spotting. Uh, Glasgow to Bristol and onwards to either Frankfurt or Amsterdam. Uh, flew it on Dash 8 20 years ago with BA in brackets. Bryman Airways was always pretty busy. Yeah, not a bad shout that either. Mm. Excellent. Uh, so on a, as a final sort of closing note, um, just to kind of uh, start to wrap up this sort of part of the show, uh, mm. do we see uh, do we see the new flyby being a success? I'd like to think so. I think it will be. I think they've got the... Um, I mean, they've, they've, they've got those routes sorted, haven't they? They know what they're doing. Uh, there's a reason why they've chosen them routes. I think they're going to re-establish themselves. I think it's going to take time. I don't think it's going to be overnight. But I think over the next maybe 18 months to two years, I think we'll see start seeing a lot more of these regional airports getting involved. And I'll think, well, I don't know whether they'll carry on flying Dash 8s or what. Who knows? I imagine yeah. they'll stick with Dash 8s. I think they probably would have learned their lesson. Yeah, yeah. But then if they're only doing regional kinds of flights, if they're flying from... If they could start doing Southampton to Inverness or Southampton to Edinburgh, they could even start flying 320s or something, couldn't they? You know, even um, if they wanted to stretch, you know, if they wanted to stretch their, um, you know, broaden their horizons and stuff, and they went a little bit further, they could always turn to the 220. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the costs 
it'd be phenomenal like wouldn't it but i think i think they've got their own little niche market and i think they'll serve it quite well and i don't think <coughs> excuse me i don't think there's much more room for another another easy jet or another ryan and i don't think flyby want to become something like that maybe what transatlantic allison was saying earlier on about the money what we're going to be invested into flyby it could have possibly turned it into a a third you know cheap carrier like the two we've already got the your easy jets and your uh, ryanairs but mm. obviously it never transpired did it so sort of they are where they are now and and i think that to keep that little niche in the market there what they're serving now in the dash eights and just zipping about here there and everywhere i think they could serve it quite well and 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 you know give logan her run for the money i suppose i think so yeah, I'd like yeah. to see them be a success. I, I do. Yeah. I want to see them around for years to come. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think that the best way to sum it up um, is what Transatlantic Allison says, where uh, if they can get through the first two years, then yeah, yeah they've got a good chance of, uh, of yeah. getting through. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, they just got. I think they just got to be careful, haven't they, and just do it slowly, haven't they, and not not rush into it. I suppose that's the way. I suppose with any business, isn't it? Yeah. So not too much, too quickly, and and we've seen that. So many times in some of the podcasts we've done before, we've seen airlines failing because they've just gone gun call, haven't they? And got into into too much too quickly, and it's just it's just backfired on them, hasn't it? Mm. So, and yeah. it happens all too often, doesn't it? Well, a massive fingers crossed for the yeah. new flyby. Uh, we'll be sort of wishing them well and mm. keeping a good eye on them for uh, for the next so many you know so many years or so. I'm sure definitely, um, and hopefully get to try them out as well. Yeah. I can't so, wait to see him again, me in Manchester. That's yeah, what I'm looking forward to. It'll be good. I know they've mm. actually flown one of their dash eights down to Nuki a few times, but I've never been around to get it. So, no, fantastic, yeah, yeah, so fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Mm. So, uh, that is our chat about Flybeat done for this evening. Now we are, sort right. of, you know, where we are now, but coming up to an hour and 20 minutes, it seems wrong to kind of finish it now. So, what I think we should do very spontaneously is maybe for the next 15 minutes or so, if you're ha happy with that, Ian, um, is to kind of throw out a very quick Q&A. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. Can um, I just quickly throw out a quick glass of water because I'm gagging for a drink? You disappear. I'll leave 50%. you on the screen, but you disappear. All right. Well, and I'll, uh, I'll just get chatting away here. No problem. So, um, yeah, for the next 15 minutes or so, in fact, I will take Ian off the screen just very quickly while we do this. So for the next 15 minutes or so, uh, let's open up a QA. and a uh, You can ask myself or you can ask Ian um, pretty much anything you like in terms of aviation. If you want our views on anything, if you want to ask us a simple question, or if you want to ask us as a whole, um, do feel free to pretty much chuck in uh, any question uh, you like. And I'm going to start off uh, with a question that Ken has put in the chat with... Uh, let's keep tonight going. Views on BA's problems at Heathrow today. Now, I'm fairly certain if I'm correct, this is the second time this has happened. Now, in about a month or so, I think. About a month or so, Ian has returned. Um, so we're answering well, the question that Ken's put All right. on, the, on views. Views on BA's uh, problems at Heathrow today. Do you know what happened today? Um, I believe there was another technical yeah another another technical problem um mm. i believe this is the second time in a month this has happened because mm. when i went to do some spotting i think it was a day after i think when steve you know our actual co-host steve um went up there and there was a few ba planes not flying because of a technical issue and a month mm. later here we are yeah. again um I mean, twice in a month, it's not it's not looking good. Doesn't look good for British Airways to have all these problems, um, especially your IT. That's going to be enough to kind of cancel, uh, cancel a lot of flights, a lot of flights. Mm. You, you think after the first time? I mean, we we all experience whether it's just fault your internet falling out or a problem with your phone or anything like that. We all experience IT issues one way or another. But for a massive company like B BA to 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 experience an IT issue and not to get it right immediately is a massive, you know, kick to them because the the the, the cost of of that IT issue it's not just the cost of the IT it's the lost revenue and and obviously they'll be feeling that won't they? Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And all these delays mm. and stuff like absolutely. guarantee yeah. now if I just if I quickly go onto flight radar. Um you know the amount of, I mean it's only what ten to nine and just for you know real life to reconcile you know phone to real life recon reconciliation that there if I just change that up a bit and brighten it down a little bit that is Heathrow right now it's nothing is it let me just I'll change the, the zoom on it hang on yeah there we go. That is Heathrow right now. Yeah, there's not much happening there, is there? So compare that to a normal day. Mm. You'd have lots of planes after plane after plane after plane. You know, it's it, it's not great for them, is it? No, at all, no. No. The, the thing is, I mean, you, you think definitely now after this second it issue that they, they, they're going to nail it this time aren't they and like uh, allison said a bit uh down, down comments there probably cheap it or something like that or somebody's cut a corner but it you know it could be something as simple as somebody pressing control alt delete or something like that mm. because you know it, it, i i think it is such a, a delicate instrument isn't it that anything can upset it can't it and i think even yeah. if it's not an it issue with a handful of planes within an half an hour window has got a knock on them for the, just the, the rest of everything, hasn't it? With, with everything, particularly with Ethereum, where everything's on such a tight schedule. Yeah, um, very true. Very true. Um, yeah. yeah, it's not great. It, it doesn't look fantastic for them, if I'm honest. But, um, you know, that'll probably be back to normal in a couple couple of days, I think, or maybe even tomorrow at some point for the flights yeah. to actually catch up on themselves. Because no doubt we'll be seeing if they end up returning. The flights and stuff they'll be going right into the um middle of the night and stuff i think mm. so you're gonna have to do aren't they? have to catch that yeah. back up again aren't they but they'll, they'll, i'm sure mm. they'll, they'll they'll sort it won't they i'm sure they'll sort it yes mm. uh steve plains piping up with a question he says where is steve he's the funniest guy on the show don't know, don't know. not a clue yeah I know he said he had a bit of a sniffle or something earlier on today, but yeah, he had a bit of a cold or something. He that's said, it. I said, I'm just to pull his socks up and put his big coat on if he were that cold, but yeah, what is it that yeah. is it that TV advert? Is, uh, what's that advert? Just pull my socks up and I'll crack on, <laughs> pull your socks up and crack on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, what advert is that from? I've heard it before. Oh, I'll I don't pull know. His, pull my socks up and I'll crack on. I can't think. I, I remember know. you said that quite a bit, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's what we that's what we've given them the uh, the advice of. But uh, hey ho, never mind. Um, uh, Rob Brown, plane spotting. Has Steve mentioned the seven three seven at Bournemouth, destined for Buffalo in Canada? Uh, they made the announcement this week. I saw a picture of this actually. Buffalo Airways have bought themselves a seven three seven. Yeah, I think um, somebody put a picture up, didn't they? Yeah, a bit of an upgrade from uh, the the the. the, the DC3s and everything that they've got and mm -hmm. DC6s and that. So, yeah, but that'd be pretty cool to see uh, eventually. I know uh, Isaac and uh, Jack will probably be hot on that case. Yeah, they'll be all over on too, won't they? Yeah, mm. no doubt about that at all. Um, where is it just now? I did see it. There we go. Jack Rolls says, Tom, before you head off, can you get Ian to try and do an impression of me? I want to see how much he's improved. He's not improved at all. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of a throat on as well this week. No, oh, there it is. Pull your mm. socks up and crack on, lad. Mm. Um, mm. Let's have a look for some more questions here. Uh, he's also then asked, Tom and Ian, did I ever tell you the story of when my brother had his mate round? Probably not. Probably not, Jack, and I don't think that's a story just for now for time, but oh, too late. <laughs> it's not too late, is it? He's put it on. All right, okay, that is that's yeah, I can I can do that. That's fine. I can just imagine him. Yeah, you get off my brother now, you. Or it'll be a pitchfork. <laughs> here, listen here, right? Yeah, don't yeah. don't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's the story that Jack Rolls has put out. So my brother had his mate Luke around, uh, and they were play fighting. I was. I was only young at the time. I thought they were really fine, so I picked up my plastic cricket bat and accidentally whacked him. 
accidentally get up whack. my brother. Yeah, you don't accidentally whack somebody after you just picked up a cricket bat, do you? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Oops, I've accidentally picked this up. Oops, I've accidentally swung it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steve Plains has asked us there, will you both be getting the Concord on Microsoft Flight Simulator? It, it's not for me, I'm afraid, Steve. And, and for the simple reason, as Tom's probably got the photographs, the way I bounced that A320 into uh, Malta today, I'm not fit to fly a, a Concorde. I'm not fit to fly a paper airplane, I'll be honest with you. But And it's only um, a simulator, so God knows what it'd be like in real life. No. Uh, I, on the other hand, will be, because then it means I can do transatlantic flights in about three hours, which I'm happy to do. So... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll I'll definitely be uh, definitely be purchasing that. Yeah, it'd be a fantastic um, be a fantastic plane to have on that. Same with the level of detail and stuff. What they've, uh, what they've it looks really good. Out. It looks yeah. really good from the screenshots and mm. the the, the uh, posts that the developers have put up um, and everything else like that. It looks it looks really really good. And there's there's quite a few airliners coming this year to flight sim. So I'm looking forward to. Uh, mm. Looking forward to that, but yeah, I'll definitely be one to buy the buy the Concorde, no doubt. It's only, it's cheap as well, considering like you know, um, you know, considering if you were to buy like the the CRJ seven hundred and that, it's like forty or quid. Yeah, there's some really expensive ones, isn't there? To buy Concorde, like mm. twenty eight quid. Yeah, you'd you'd think it'd be the other way around, but you know, for, for, it's actually a bargain for me, like mm. twenty eight quid for Concorde. Mm. But I'm going to wait for the reviews to see if people think it's any good. Yeah. Um, Transatlantic Allison there. She's put Sims are ordered to land now. You'll be proud of me, Allison, because I actually landed. I, I greased the 330s. We flew them 33900 didn't we, as well today? We flew the 330neos, yes. Yeah. And I managed to land one in Gibraltar and still had what, what, a couple of hundred meters. No, it weren't that, were it? About 30 meters, I think I ended up. We left on one way. <laughs> And I think you had a bit longer than me, didn't you? I had a bit longer than that because I used the reverses. Yeah, well, I thought you were <laughs> Maybe not as quick as you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Flying, flying the 330neo into Gibraltar was an interesting experience. And then flying it, yeah, you know, flying, a, a, what, what was it we flew? I flew the 767 into... Um, Malta. Look, look yeah, yeah. through the 767 into Malta and, and sort of greased that. And as I was watching you come in, it was watching a child on the bouncy castle. It certainly were like throwing a bouncing ball down runway, weren't it? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah pretty it was, much. It was a shock of that, to be honest. But there were no injuries and everyone got out and everyone were happy. Everyone not that you could see because we bailed as soon as we landed. So yeah, not that you could not. see any injuries. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, when I taxied to the um, gate, I think I nearly stuck the nose for the gate, didn't I? And, and ended up in departure lounge. Yeah, pretty much. No pun intended. Yeah, it weren't, weren't me best. That it wasn't one of me best. <laughs> yeah. A uh, quick one from Jack Rolls. Tom and Ian, out of the three seven eight seven variants, what's your favourite? For me, it's the seven eight seven dash nine. I think I'll have to go with that. Um, I'm more of a three fifty guy, but yeah. Yeah, I'm more of a three fifty guy. I, 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 uh, I think the three, I think the nine as well. I think the ten's a bit long, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it looks a bit too long, doesn't it? But the nine. It's just about right, isn't it? And yeah. I think, I th thinking, and I know we were talking about deliveries last week, and you don't, you, you, well, they don't suit retro deliveries, do they? But a lot of deliveries, what they do have, they look absolutely fantastic in it. They are proper. Oh, 100%. Yeah, they're, they're proper, funny looking planes. They really are. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely. I'd still say 350, but. Yeah, 350 all day long, but yeah, 787 variant, definitely the Dash 9. Dash 10 is too long. Quite like the Dash 8, but Dash 9 for me is. Is, is easily the favorite mm. uh question here from ken it says tom whilst obviously you guys enjoy flights and etc what the hell do you do whilst flying the atlantic for hours genuine question i stick that puppy on autopilot and go do what i need to absolutely and i totally <laughs> agree yeah i mean today it was all about getting tonight's show ready it was all, yeah, about, pretty it much. Was all about this tonight so pretty much yeah. i mean in the two hours was it two hours two hours two, that we flew two, two and a half flights weren't it about that weren't yeah. it uh, two and a half, two and a half hour flights, Bristol to Gibraltar. We just stuck yeah. it on autopilot, and then we discussed yeah. this evening's show. Yeah, as soon as we landed in Gibraltar, we took off, went off to Malta in the end, um, and that was like two hour flight, and then we just carried on prepping for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, but I think if anybody sits there for the entire duration of the flight, like if you're doing it in a, you know, 
it's like before I, I I only ever done it once and it was on flights I think it was 2004 I think it was where I've done transatlantic flight in a Delta triple seven 200 long range and I, I actually sat here and watched it <laughs> I and I vowed that. to myself after that never to do that again no no so I mean, after I realized it was you know, autopilot and stuff so once I knew yeah. that I was like boom Straight on top of I, I think the beauty with flight sim and this flight sim as well, you can actually um, you can do the interesting bit, can't you? And when you get to cruising altitude, you can just do the interesting bit coming into land, can't you? And just skip the middle bit totally if you want to, mm. can't you? Or even fast forward it if you wanted to, can't you? So you can cheat a little bit, can't you? Yeah, I think fast forward the kind of defeats bit. the object for me. So I just does. tend yeah. to autopilot, go off and do what I need to do, and then calculate it. I'll be need to be back in about three, four hours. And then once that's yeah. done, I'll come back, and then the rest is pretty much good to go slightly different with concord because you only got a couple hours to do something but yeah that's pretty much mm. what i do is i stick on autopilot and walk away from it yeah that's what you need to do isn't it yeah carry on with your pretty business pretty much can't you? Mm. um yeah. oh <laughs> get to cruise go to the pub decent <laughs> <laughs> yeah and forget to land it mm. yeah forget to land it and overpass yeah. the, uh, the airport <laughs> i know i will um when I downloaded that 330-900 for the first time, I did. I always do a little short flight, and it was, um, I think it was Manchester to Shannon or something like that. And I, I, I took off, got it up into, uh, got myself to a, a relatively decent altitude, it weren't too high. Um, went about and did some bits and pieces. And then when I came back and I had a look, and I could see Shannon underneath me at about 20,000 feet or something. <laughs> so that, that was a bit of a disaster. So I had to sort of, North dive it into, dive into it. yeah, probably not, probably not the best, best solution. But yeah, yeah, that, that didn't go well either. Sam mm. Danvers says, Have you done a flight to Sydney from London? I think it's far too long for me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I like I'm, transatlantic and stuff like that. And I don't mind like seven, eight, nine hour flights, but to do London to Sydney, yeah, probably not for me. No, not for me either. I bet there are diehard people out there. I mean, some of these flight sims what you see these these people have created in the bedrooms and things like that with all the screens and you know the virtual cockpits and and things like that are absolutely fantastic and i'm sure that they've done flights like that but i mm. certainly couldn't do it I yeah absolutely not that. if you ever want to know what a pilot does in the air uh allison's just putting she does a crossword there we go there you go mm. all you need to know so uh yeah let's let's pause i think we should do this at the end of each show i think that'd be quite nice actually to kind of do a little q a and stuff so yeah. people can get questions in about topics and that. i think that's quite cool but we're going to begin to wrap the show up so thank you everybody for watching this evening hopefully you've learned a lot um and sort of enjoyed our sort of chat about uh the the return of flyby um hopefully it's been been a lot of fun i know we've we, well i've enjoyed it have you enjoyed tonight's show in i have done yeah yeah it's gone really fast and all that it's gone really really quick tonight but probably because yeah. steve's not here yeah probably yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we don't mean that really down, steve. Is, so. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't mean that really no no it's been fantastic and it's been, it's been nice again to see all the uh names again in the chat as well and then some decent questions in there as well so yeah it's a good yeah, question yeah, it's a very good question mm -hmm. yeah big mm -hmm. thumbs up to everybody yeah, so definitely. uh this is the part of the show where we do some shout outs now um, so if anybody has any shout outs that they want to give into the chat, uh, now is the time to do so. We'll show them on screen whilst we do ours. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ian, if you'd like to do some shout outs to uh, whoever may deserve one. Yeah, well, it's not going to be many to be fair, but uh, <laughs> no, just a big shout out to everybody who's been watching again tonight, who's been listening, who's sat in the background, who's been commenting and what have you. It makes... Um, it, you know, it, it, number one, it makes our job a little bit easier being able to read all comments out, and it's nice to have the comments, you know, involved in what we're doing as well. And it and it sort of throws, I don't know, I mean, tonight it's thrown a bit of a different angle onto things by doing a bit of a Q and A at the end and and things like that because that's come through the, the comments. So that's um, absolutely fantastic. So a massive shout out to you guys. Big shout out to Steve as well because I know, joking aside, he, he's pretty rough at the moment, Steve. It's not COVID or anything, so there's nothing to worry about. But he's he's suffering quite bad, so uh, you get well soon, Steve. Uh, I'm sure you'll be up on your feet again in no time. So and that's it. Yeah. I think this one has now taken over from um, <laughs> from from Sam uh, Sam Danvers' comment of the evening, and it goes to Alison. 
One last question. If you didn't have a thumb with the bottom half of your sandwich, fall off. We are now testing that. Yup. I don't know if it would. Depends how you how you grasp it, I guess. Mm. I use a knife and fork. Like Steve does with his pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have a word for yourself, honestly. Yeah, no. No. I just I just stick it in a horse bag and hang it over my ears. <laughs> <laughs> I just put it in a blender and drink it with a straw. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie me. Um right, a few a few a uh, few comments here. Uh so Jim Gamble says, Take care everyone, even you, Sarah. Catch you all next time. Thank you very much yeah, Jim, cheers, for watching. Uh Jack Rolls uh giving me a massive shout out for the watermark that I made him for his photos. Um mm -hmm. Not a problem at all. Um, where did I get to? Uh, Matthew Harris. Probably improved them and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now oh, it covers them all. Mm, don't know. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Harris says, great job, guys. Thanks again. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. And Ken Carr would like a shout-out to his grandson, Austin. So a big shout-out to your yeah, grandson. Yeah, massive shout-out to Austin there. there. Yeah. A big thumbs up as well. Well, I was just, I was just thinking about the thumbs now. Now, I... Alison's got me thinking, how do you do a thumbs up if you haven't got a thumb? So you, you it'd just be well, it's got to be one of these fingers, isn't it? Yeah, Can't be that one. Can't no. be that one. <laughs> no, no. no, let's leave it where it is. Uh, let's leave it there. Yeah, let's yeah. walk away from that. Uh, right, I'll do some quick shout outs and then uh, we'll get on to who next week's guest is is because it's a big one yeah um, next week. so um big shout out to everybody watching uh, this evening uh we had quite a big number of people watching and you know always fills me with a big smile on my face fills me with a big smile on my face because it's you know it's bringing a community together and that's what we enjoy yeah yeah it's really um, nice Mm. So, yeah, so big thank you to everybody watching. Big mm. thank you to Sarah and Ken for allowing us to, again, stream onto their channels as well and invade for the for the day. Um, so, yeah, so big thank you uh, to you guys um, for that. Um, uh, big thank you to you, Ian, uh, for stepping in as the co-host. No uh, have to give you the promotion and knock down uh, Steve to uh, contributor. <laughs> Uh, well, of course, big shout out to Steve for being yeah. the uh, the big wuss that he is with a little bit of a <laughs> cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, everybody watching in the background, um, and of course, uh, as always, frontline workers, healthcare workers around the world, wherever you are, uh, always the biggest of shout outs to you for the continued efforts throughout this weird time that we're going through mm. uh just as a last thing this seems to be a thing that we do every week um chutney ideas um yeah. rob round playing spot and says best wishes troops cracking as always p.s had a nice mango chutney with my chicken tikka would you go for a mango chutney with a chicken tikka i do actually like a mango chutney now it's a staple isn't it when you go to any curry house you always get your three little dishes you get your little tub of red onions, you get your little tub of mango chutney, and you get that disgusting lime pickle. <laughs> that is vile, that stuff. But you can't be a pompered on me, a bit of red onion and dipped into your mango chutney. Top man there, Rob. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. There you go. Uh, any suggestions for chutneys this week? Oh, no. Oh, I just put you on the Now, you've thrown me, throw me under a bus here, Tom. So, um, so should we save it for next week? I think so. I can rustle something up for next week. Muscle, yeah. Up, yeah. muscle something up for next mm. week and we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, well, we've uh, got also just coming up, before... haven't we? So I, yeah. might, I might think of an Easter chutney where you can all in, Easter enjoy chutney, over at Easter. Yeah. Don't make it too fun. We'll get into trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what the snowflakes are like. We'll get Absolutely. into trouble. Oh, yeah. um, also, before we go, this is the picture that uh, uh, Ken was having a meltdown about with the dragonfly. Oh, that's fantastic. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, that's a different version of the um, of the dragonfly yeah. uh, picture that Ken sent Wicked. earlier. That's what he was having a meltdown about. He finally got the right one, so there yeah. you go. Nice picture. That decent to catch the uh, dragonfly as clearly as he did as well. Yeah, he's done really well, though. It's a cracking picture, that. Mm. So, who's on next week, I hear you ask? Why are we making such a big deal about it? So... Mm. Um, we had it on for episode number three, where it was just myself and uh, Jer. I think we were just the only hosts uh, of the show. 
things have changed since then and we've done 52 episodes since then so it'd be nice to catch up on what's been a year's worth of the departure lounge podcast which is amazing to even think about right now we'll do probably do a, probably do a bigger celebration for it next week but yeah mm -hmm. so it's been a year since this show has started um and we thought no better way to kind of celebrate that than with next wednesday Having uh, former British Airways 747 captain and TV personality, it is, of course, Kat Burton uh, will be rejoining us um, mm -hmm. to uh, see what she's been up to for the year since she's been on the show. Uh, of course, many of you will know Kat Burton through Twitter and everything else. But of course, if you watched the TV program Plane Spotting Live, I think it was called. Plane Spotting Live, yeah. From, uh... She was the expert on there. So yeah. she's been in the, the uh, uh, sort of in the, in the company of Andy Peters and uh, what was the other guy's name? Was it uh, John Snow, weren't it? John Snow or something. I think so, yeah. Peter Snow. That wasn't what I was saying. Peter it was Snow. one of them, weren't it? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so yeah. she was on there. And of course, she's a world renowned former British Airways 747. Absolutely. 400 mm. captain. So we're very much looking forward to having her back on the show. Mm. Um, if you have any questions for Kat, of course, think of them for next Wednesday, um, where she'll be on the show to answer them yeah. all within reason, of course. Um, so, yeah. So Kat Burton with us next week. So excited for this. So excited to have her back. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, so, um, other than that, uh, all that's left now is to say our goodbyes. So, Ian, if you'd like to uh, say goodbye to the wonderful people still watching. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight, watching. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as me and Tom have enjoyed it. And hopefully see you all again next week for when we've got uh, Kat Burton on. And... and I'm really, really excited for that. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> yeah, really it's going to be good forward fun. to that, yeah. I might yeah. tell Steve to have another cold next week. Let him drag it out a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely wonderful. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, no doubt we'll see you next uh, next Wednesday, Ian. Yeah, there's a little comment there from uh, Alison. Say hi to Kat for me in case I'm flying. So wonderful, yeah. It would we'll be make nice sure if you're here with us, Alison, but, yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll make sure we do that for you. Yeah, brilliant. See you guys. Wonderful. There goes Ian. Um, so uh, just a couple of quick notes, um, as I pointed out before. Uh, do leave a like on the stream if you're enjoying it, whether it's the Visions Aviation Facebook page, Visions International YouTube page, or, of course, our own page at the Departure Lounge. Um, and, of course, if you're new to any of it, uh, Visions Aviation or the Departure Lounge, uh, do consider subscribing to not just myself, but of course to uh, Ken and Sarah at uh, Visions Aviation as well. Well worth subscribing to interesting content. You can't really go wrong with it. So yeah, do consider subscribing if you are new. Uh, other than that, we will see you next Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. for another episode of the Departure Lounge podcast here on all the channels. Uh, Kat Burton will join us. Looking forward to it a lot. So all that's left to say is um, take care. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, take care, everybody. See you later. Bye.